Hi there, I'm Sumit Bansal and in this video, I'm going to show you how to get the names of all the sheets in your workbook with one single formula. Now I'm going to use a function which is a very old function that not many people know about. And then I'm also going to show you how to do this using Power Query. So let's get started. So here I have this workbook and you can see I have all these sheet names, I have summary and then all these department names, marketing sales. Now as of now, all these sheets are empty, but my aim in this video is to show you how to get all these sheet names in the summary sheet. Now to do this, I'm going to use a function called get.workbook. Now this is a function that you cannot use in the worksheet in Excel. This is an old macro four function. Now this function used to exist in Excel and used to be functional in Excel when there was no VBA. But when VBA came, then this function was no longer needed. So it stopped working in the worksheet, but you can still use it in name range. So this function is still there in Excel. You cannot use it in the worksheet, but you can use it in the name range. So here, let me show you the function, which is get Get dot workbook and this is going to be our formula get dot workbook is the function when I use one as the argument it means that I'm looking for all the sheet names so this function is going to give me all the sheet names but as of now as I said you cannot use this in the worksheet see what happens when I try and hit enter it, uh, it tells me that function isn't valid because I cannot use it so let's do one thing let's copy this formula go to the formulas tab and here within define names group i'm going to click on define name and let's create a name range so let's call this sheet names and here i'm going to put the formula in the refers to field now when i click ok it allows me to put that formula and create that named range and now instead of using the formula i can use the named range in a cell and this is allowed see what happens when i hit enter it gives me this range where it gives me all these sheet names where first it gives me the workbook name and then followed by the sheet name. Now I do not want this in one single row. I want them in a column one below the other. So I'm going to come here and I'm going to put this in the transpose function. So now when I hit enter, it gives me all these sheet names in one single column, one below the other. Now, I also do not want the workbook name in most likelihood, you also just want the sheet names. You do not want the workbook name. So to do that, I'm going to use the text after function where this is my array, this which is going to be the first argument. And then my delimiter is going to be square bracket, the ending of square bracket, because I want everything after this square bracket ends. So now when I hit enter, it gives me all these sheet names. So now this is one single formula, which is a very simple formula that will fetch and give you all the sheet names, no matter how many sheets you have, the entire list would be given to you here. Now, in this case, this formula has one drawback, which is that this will not automatically update. For example, if I add a new sheet or I, I shuffle them and I, let's say I change the order of the sheets, I bring the sales sheet to the end, then this list is not going to automatically update. Or let's say I change the name of any of these sheets, it will not update. So if I want this to be dynamic, I can make it dynamic. So what I'm gonna do is at the end of this formula, I'm going to use ampersand and then add t function. Now t function gives the text value. And if I give it uh, anything which is a number, it is going to give a blank string. And within this, I'm going to use the now function. Now now function is volatile. It updates whenever there is a change in the worksheet and it returns a number. And because it returns a number, this entire T function is going to give a blank string. Now, because I am attaching a blank string to the name of the sheet, it will not change my result. So now when I hit enter, you will now see that this has become dynamic. Let me show you. If I bring the sales sheet here to the end after finance and go back to the summary sheet, you can see that it has automatically changed. My list has automatically updated. Similarly, if I come here and I change the name to let's say finance two and go back here, you can see that this name has automatically updated. The only situation I found where this does not update is when I add a new sheet. So if I add a new sheet, and go back here, you can see that this has not updated, but as soon as you make any other change, if you change the order of the sheets, you drag them here and there, or you enter anything in any cell, this is going to automatically update because now it has become dynamic. So let me come here and let me delete this sheet. Now, 
Let me show you how to create a hyperlink in such a way that when I click on the hyperlink, it is going to take me to the sheet. For example, in this case, if I want to go to marketing sheet and I want to go to the cell A1 in marketing sheet, I would create a hyperlink in such a way that it takes me there. But before I do that, let me show you one more thing. In this case, you will notice that I also have the summary sheet. Now, I may not need the name summary because I'm already in that sheet. I do not even want to click and go there because I'm already in that sheet. But I want the name of all these other sheets. So in that case, what you can do is use this formula. So copy this and then put this within the filter function. So this gives me my array and within the filter function, the condition is going to be this is not equal to the summary sheet. So I can put that in double quotes. So now it gives me the names of all the sheets except the summary sheet. So you can use the filter function uh, or any other function to make sure that summary sheet is excluded from here. Now I want to create a hyperlink. So let's use the hyperlink function. And within the hyperlink function, I need to give it two arguments. The first one is the link location. Now, as I mentioned, if I go to this sheet here, let's say marketing, and I want to create a link to this sheet, let's see what happens. I create an equal to sign and I go to marketing here and click on A1. You can see that it creates this link automatically, which is marketing followed by an exclamation followed by A1, which means that if I want to create a hyperlink here, then that hyperlink should point to the sheet name followed by an exclamation sign followed by A1. So I'm going to create that here. So I'm going to use hyperlink function, but within hyperlink function, when you, when I'm creating it before the sheet name, I would also have to push, put a hash. So let's do that. I'm going to put a hash in double quotes. And I'm also going to put the name of the sheet in single quotes. Now this is needed because if you have more than one word, for example, in case of finance space two, these are two words. So I cannot just have finance two. I need to put them in single quotes. So to make sure that that is applied to all the, these sheet names, I'm going to put every name in single quote. So if it is one single word, it is fine. But if the, it's two word, then that is a requirement. So that would be fulfilled for all these cases. So I'm going to put a single quote here. So hash followed by a single quote. Then I'm going to have the sheet name, which is marketing, then I'm percent. And then again, within double quotes, I would first have the single quote, then the ampersand sign, sorry, the exclamation sign, and then A1. So now if I select this part, then you'll see it gives me hash, then marketing within single quotes, then exclamation mark, and then A1. So now this is going to take me to marketing. And now I can also give it a friendly name. In this case, let's just use the sheet name as the friendly name. Now, when I hit enter, it gives me marketing here and I can copy it for all these cells. If I now click on any of these cells, if I click on marketing, it takes me to marketing. If I click on manufacturing, it takes me to manufacturing. And if I click on finance, it works. It takes me to finance. If I'm not using those single quotes, then this formula is going to fail in case of finance too, because there are two words. Now, if you're thinking, why am I not using dynamic arrays here? For example, in this case, instead of A1, why am I not just using this entire range? So instead of using these, this formula and then copying it down, I can just have one single formula that spills. Let's try that. So I'm going to select this entire thing. It gives me A1 hash, and then let's do the same thing here for friendly name. And let's hit enter. It gives me spill error, obviously, because I have these other cells that are filled. So let's remove them. And you know what happens in this case is somehow hyperlink uh, friendly name function cannot handle dynamic array. So in this case, these links are functional. If I click on this one, it will take me to manufacturing. See what happens when I click on it, it takes me to manufacturing, but the name here is still marketing because that is what I used in the first one here. So this is the reason I am not using dynamic arrays here. So I'm going to remove this hash here, remove this, this hash here and stick to one formula that gives me one uh, hyperlink formula. And then I drag this down for all these cells. So this is going to work in all the cases. So this is how you can get all the sheet names. And then you can get all these sheet names hyperlinked in such a way that when you click on it, it takes you to the sheet. Now, two more important things I need to tell you about is because this is an old macro four function. When you are saving this file, you will have to save this as a macro enabled file. For example, if now I try and save this file, it will tell me that this is the thing and tells me this is an Excel four function stored in defined name. So you need to save it as a macro enabled file. So when you are saving it, you need to save it with a dot XLSM extension. The other thing is sometimes when you have this function in the named range and you're working fine and then you open this uh, workbook, sometimes you may see a blocked error. If that is the case, this is what you need to do. Go to the file tab, then go to options and here go to trust center and in the trust center settings, make sure 
that in the macro settings, this option is checked, which is enable Excel for macros when VBA macros are enabled. If this is not checked, then you may see a blocked error here. And in case you see the blocked error, just go here and then enable this setting. So this is how you can get all the sheet names using very simple formula. Now let me also show you how to get the sheet names using Power Query. So here again, I have this workbook where I have all these sheets and I want to get the names of all these sheets in this summary sheet. Now I'm going to use Power Query to do that. And the way I'm going to do this is by connecting Power Query to this file as if it is connecting to some external file so that it can get all the names of the sheets in this file. Now, as of now, the name of this file is sheet names.xlsx. Now I'm going to go to the data tab then click on get data then go to from file and then go to from Excel workbook. When I click on it, it opens the import data dialog box and it will ask me to locate the file that I want to open. So I'm going to go to that folder. It's in the downloads folder here. And this is the same file that is right now open on the screen. So while I have the file open, when I connect Power Query as if I'm connecting to an external file, it allows me to access all the sheet names. See what happens when I double click on this. It is now going to open the navigator dialog box where it will show me all the sheet names. So here I have it and I have all these sheet names here. So I'm going to click on this and then open this data in the Power Query Editor. So I'm going to click on the transform data button. And now here you can see it has given me the table where I have all these sheet names. Now, as of now, I do not want all these other columns. I just want the sheet names. So I'm going to come here on this name column, right click and then click on remove other columns. And that's it. This is what I want. So I'm going to go to close and load and then click on close and load to and then choose the, any cell in the summary worksheet. So in this case, let's click on existing worksheet and I want this in A1. So the cell reference is fine. And now when I click OK, it is going to give me a table that has all the sheets. Now, while I've got the result here, this is still not fully functional, fully properly functional. Let me show you the issue. So in this case, let's say I add another sheet here. So I add something called as AI. And if I come here, so you can see it has not automatically updated, but obviously Power Query doesn't update automatically. So I would have to refresh it. Let's try and refresh this here. So if I refresh it, it still doesn't work. And the reason for this is because Power Query is connecting to the same file, but I have not saved this file. So let's save the file. I would just use control S to save this file. And let's now refresh this. So now when I refresh it, you'll see something happens. I do have the new sheet name, which is AI, but I also get these two new things, which is sheet names, dot XLSX and uh, external data. Now, the reason this is happening is because when Power Query is connecting to this file, it also sees this new element, which is a new table that has been added. And it also gives it gives us this. So what we are going to do is go back to Power Query Editor. So I'm going to click on the query name and then we are going to just filter it so that it only gives us the sheet names. So in this case, I'm going to go to the source step and here Again, it doesn't give me the entire thing. So what I'm going to do is go to transform, sorry, here in home tab and click on refresh preview. And when I do that, it refreshes so that it connects to the file again, because the file has been saved. It now gives me all the things that are there in the file and it has all the sheets, but you can see, I also have a table and I have a defined name. Now this is something I do not want. So I can simply filter it out. So I would come here and I would just select sheet and click OK. So when I do that, it adds this step here, which says uh, table dot select rows, select rows is like a filter where it says in the source table for each row, if the kind column is equal to sheet, then it is fine. Otherwise hide it. So it only gives me these sheets here. And now I can come to this step and you can see I would only have the sheet name. So now when I click uh, on close and load, it is going to update and I only have the sheets where there are actually sheet names and it's not a table name or an external data name. Now, if you do not want the summary sheet, you can again go back to Power Query Editor and here you can filter it out. So in this step, you can come here and you can just check everything and uncheck summary. So you'll see it again, it adds a step, which is again table dot select rows where it says the name should not be equal to summary. So anything that is the, where the name is not equal to summary, it is going to give it to you here in the list. So this is another way you can quickly get all the sheet names using Power Query in one single sheet. That's it in this video. I hope you found this useful. Also, if you're liking these videos, please subscribe to this YouTube channel and click on the bell icon so that you never miss out on any new Excel tips video I come up with. Thank you and have a nice day.